Hi, I'm Jeremiah Prophet. And I'm Shander Prophet. And welcome to the 22nd episode of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. This episode, we're going to talk about pre SEMA 2018. Last year, we went to SEMA with Cummins and Bilstein. We had two vehicles. This year, we're taking five vehicles. We'll be featured with Maxxis, Cummins, Bilstein, and more. That's right, and this episode we're gonna feature two of those Land Cruisers that we're taking to SEMA. This BJ42 that's right behind me, and another one right after it, so keep watching. We just finished a body off restoration of this 1984 BJ42 from Canada. This 1984 BJ42 is one of the last vehicles in the 40 series. This Land Cruiser came diesel from the factory, but because the owner wanted modern day drivability, the Cummins R2.8 was a natural choice. The Cummins R2.8 is right at home here in the FJ40 engine compartment. Behind the Cummins is a Toyota H55F 5-speed transmission. This tidy little engine compartment also houses an ARB dual compressor. We used a robust cooling system with a big inner cooler and a brushless electric fan to cool this little powerhouse. We equipped this vehicle with our customary 2.5 inch Old Man Emu suspension system. And of course, a set of Bilstein 5100 series shocks. Because this vehicle is going to SEMA, we decided to update our rear bumper. We also designed and built a completely new front bumper. And the front bumper is one of the first 70th anniversary 8274 Warren winches. This winch is a classic and celebrates 70 years of excellence by Warren Industries. The interior of this BJ42 features our six point family roll cage equipped with A series rigid lights. The seats are the original ones but have been recovered in 100% leather. Situated in the middle is a Tuffy box with a matching leather cushion. The Tuffy box also houses four custom switches. The iconic late model 40 series dash houses Dakota digital gauges, ARB switches, a retro stereo, and a vintage air Gen 4 AC system. As is customary for most of our restorations, the interior and underside of the body have been sprayed with Vortex spray liner. Right before we load this vehicle into the trailer for SEMA, we will install a set of brand new Maxxis Razor MTs on powder coated OEM wheels. This is a brand new size of tire for Maxxis Razor MTs. It's our most commonly used 33 1050R15 tire. This build received the standard attention given to all of our Stage 3 restorations, including sandblast and refinish of every component and subcomponent, as well as the full mechanical rework and mechanical subcomponent restoration. So you know, the quality of an engine install oftentimes depends on the support you get from different people and places uh, with respect to what's available. And that's one thing that's good about the Cummins R2.8 swap. There is great support from Cummins and from some other partners uh, that make this conversion easy to do. Um, a key place that you need to know if you're going to consider a Cummins 2A conversion to do yourself is a company called Axis Industries. Those are the guys who were on the forefront along with us with the introducing of this engine. And uh, they make all of the adapters we use. They make the mega bracket we use when we need to relocate the AC compressor like this. And they also have great solutions for uh, gauge provisions, uh, engine mounts, and a bunch of other stuff for non-Land Cruiser applications as well. So check out Axis Industries, and that's your tech tip for today. This Land Cruiser looks a lot like the first one we featured, but it's actually very different. This is a 1971 FJ40, which means it came from the factory with a gasoline engine in it, and we're keeping a gas engine in it. This is another body off restoration that received all of the same treatments that our most thorough stage of restoration gets. Like the last Land Cruiser you saw, every major component of this vehicle was sandblasted and refinished, and all of the subcomponents were refinished as well. 
Up front, we've got a slightly different version of the prototype bumper that we showed in the last feature, but without the sidebars on this one. And it houses the same spectacular 70th anniversary worn 8274 winch. This is the winch of choice when you're wanting to combine legendary performance with a classic look. Other great additions to the front and rear bumpers are the rigid lights and the Factor 55 recovery gear that just absolutely cannot be beat. The rear of the Land Cruiser sports a nearly finished version of our updated dual swing out rear bumper and the cooler basket was unavailable for this video because it was still at powder coating. The wheelbase of this Land Cruiser has been stretched three and a half inches to accommodate for a little bit longer rear drive shaft given the length of the drivetrain and it's sitting on top of Old Man Emu two and a half inch lift springs, Bill Stein 5100 series shocks and a Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruiser shackle reversal up front. Power for this FJ40 is provided by a 3FE 4 liter straight six gasoline engine, this time from a 1991 80 series Land Cruiser. We love the 3FE because they provide the modern amenities of fuel injection, but still have a classic look and feel, and they fit right in in an FJ40. Behind the 3FE is a Toyota H55F transmission and a split case from an FJ60 that we had vapor blasted so that it looked brand new upon reassembly. A pair of ARB air lockers and a dual ARB compressor help with the traction for this vehicle when it goes off-road. Inside this Land Cruiser you'll find later model FJ40 bucket seats that have been recovered with leather and also later model jump seats in the rear with the same leather upholstery. This rig is going to live in Las Vegas, so the vintage AC is going to be a welcome addition. It's important to mention that in cold weather climates, this AC unit provides superior heat. The dashboard of this FJ40 sports a Dakota digital gauges, a stereo system by Retro Audio, and our ashtray switch panel with four custom switches. The owner of this Land Cruiser also chose a Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruiser's six-point family roll cage with rigid A-series lighting installed. As usual, the floor and underbody of this Land Cruiser is sprayed with Vortex spray liners. To change things up a little bit, we modified the standard Tuffy Security console by lowering the profile and adding some 3D printed goodies. So most of the clients that we build these vehicles for are going to use them when they get them back. And for that reason, we choose all of the most durable finishes and coatings that we can. Uh, the paint we use is Del Fleet Evolution by PPG. It's a very hard, durable, uh, single stage enamel polyurethane. Um, we also use lots of powder coating, uh, vortex spray liners, uh, re-zinc uh, and uh, nickel finish, uh, everything we can. And this is all done just so that the coatings last and are durable, they stand up to the elements, and that these vehicles can remain just this beautiful for years and years and years into the future. It's one of the differences in quality between what you're gonna see in some other places and what we do here at Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers. Thanks for watching this episode of Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. And if you're at SEMA this year, be sure to come check us out in the Cummins booth, the Maxis booth, and the Bill Stein booth. That's right. But if you don't get to make it to SEMA, just watch our social media channels because we're going to be sending pictures and video for the whole time so everybody can see what's going on inside the show. On Instagram, we are Pro Cruiser. Facebook is Resurrection Land Cruisers. And be sure to check out our website at resurrectionlandcruisers.com. Thanks for watching. You can't do action yet because I had hair in my face. Sorry, no <laughs> actions till the hair's on her face. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Now you can there do action. Go. Yeah, now I you can do so. action. You need a brown. You need to stand on that side of it because your shirt's brown today. Oh, yeah, I know. Yesterday, so, Clint's shirt was blue and blue. Today, it's brown and matches this side. It really did match. All the employees have to wear clothes that match the projects from now on. I can only work on gray cars. The actor who played Big Bird is retiring at the age of 80. How does that make you feel? Really? I don't know. 
Bonus points, what other character in Sesame Street did he play? Uh, really? Do you know? Oscar the Grouch. Seriously? Yeah.